A family of sadistic cannibals stalks a documentary film crew in a desolate Argentine town. In the deserted town of Epiquin in Argentina, a badly beaten woman fearfully runs for her life. While she catches her breath and looks around, someone hits her head with a club. Eventually, the dazed woman regains consciousness, but she screams when she sees a man wearing an animal skull holding the club above his head, ready to deliver another blow. Days later, a van carrying a documentary film crew led by Vaco, the director, drives into Epiquen. Nacho drives the vehicle, and in the passenger seat next to him sits Carla, the film's main subject since she witnessed the devastating flood that ruined the town in 1985. Beside the director, his girlfriend Vicky holds her pet dog Kiki on her lap. Meanwhile, in the back seat, the gregarious Erica playfully annoys Diego. During the journey, the driver recounts a story of when he crossed the border to Venezuela, but the director rolls his eyes when he realizes it was just a long-winded joke with a terrible punchline. Minutes later, Nacho gives Vicky a flirtatious look through the rearview mirror, flustering her. To pass the time, Vaco asks Carla to talk about her life in Epiquen before the flood. The woman says she doesn't remember much, but that her mother used to take her to the lakeside resort. She shares how she used to fear the body of water because she couldn't swim. However, when she finally faced her fears and jumped in, she didn't sink in the saltwater lake. Carla sees Erica holding up the camera and asks if he's filming her, and the woman says it's okay because she looks beautiful. Then, the director asks the woman to recount the events during the night of the flood. She remembers waking up from the sirens and screams, and her mother carrying her because they had to flee town. Carla recalls her mother locking the front door to keep people from robbing their house, optimistic they'd return once the flood receded. Suddenly, Vicky interrupts the emotional moment when she says she needs to use a restroom, much to Vaco's annoyance. Eventually, they stop at a rundown gas station, and the three women head into the dilapidated building. As the ladies walk away, Nacho admires Carla's figure but adds that it's a shame she isn't attracted to men. Irritated by the driver's childish behavior, Vaco orders him to do something useful with his time, such as filming location shots for the documentary. Inside, Erica rings the bell, and an old woman, Abuela, appears from a back room to entertain the customers. Vicky asks to use the restroom, so Abuela points her towards the back. Then, the woman asks where they're from, and they say they're from the city. Meanwhile, the impatient director wonders why no one's approached them to fill their gas tank. So he wanders to the garage where he finds a pickup truck. Vako crouches and inspects a strange substance on the truck's bumper. Suddenly, a man appears by the garage door, catching the director trespassing. In the filthy restroom, Vicky sees newspaper clippings plastered on the walls. Then, she spots a missing poster of Mikaela, the woman who was attacked with a club earlier. Concurrently, Abuela insists they buy her meat pies because she won't allow tourists to use the restroom without purchasing anything. The old woman looks out the window and shares that she had a cousin named Olga who used to live in the city. However, due to Olga's affair with a married man and drawing ire from the community, her family found her lifelessly floating in the lake one day. As Abuela mourns her cousin, she looks at Carla and remarks how much she resembles Olga. In the garage, the imposing Chimango demands to know what Vaco's doing there. The director swears he was only looking for someone to help fill their gas tank. So the mechanic cracks a smile and says he was kidding when he tried to scare the man. Then he tells Vako to head back outside and that he'll join them shortly. After the customer leaves, Chimango looks down at the truck's headlights, which are covered in red specks. When she finishes using the restroom, Vicky hears a noise down the hall and decides to follow it. Through an open door, she watches a man pleasure himself while watching an aerobics video. Suddenly, Carla appears and tells the woman they need to leave. Outside, Erica complains about how she had to buy the old woman's unappetizing meat pies. Vako tells Chimango to clean the windshield, and as the creepy man passes Erica, he leans in and smells her. By the store entrance, the man Vicky saw pleasuring himself, Pervertito, silently watches the group. Growing increasingly uncomfortable with the situation, the crew loads back into the van. Before they drive off, Chimango charges Vako a thousand pesos for the gas and other services. At first, the director refuses to pay the exorbitant amount, but the mechanic reminds him that he trespassed in the garage and might have stolen something. The women beg Vako to pay the man so they can leave, and as they drive away, Erika disrespectfully tosses the bag of meat pies out the window. Eventually, they reach Epiquen, and the director tells everyone to set up the 
equipment since they've got limited time to shoot in the location. Diego notices Carla's somber expression and asks if she's alright. So the woman explains they're right by her grandmother's old house. Unbeknownst to the group, Senor X spies on them from an abandoned building through his rifle sight. Later, they resume filming in Carla's childhood home. She points out where her bedroom, the dining area, and the kitchen used to be. However, Vaco stops her and suggests she speak from the heart so she doesn't appear stiff on camera. So the woman talks about how most residents refused to leave until the water was waist high, and the firefighters had to remove them by force to save their lives. The director applauds and says she found the tone he wanted for the documentary. Then he tells the crew to take a five minute break before they continue filming. Diego sees the faraway look in Carla's eyes, so he approaches her and says she did a great job and can talk to him if she ever needs anything. In one of the rooms, Diego finds a child's drawing of a family etched into an old headboard. Suddenly, someone scurries across the hallway, so the man quickly exits the room. Meanwhile, Vicky and Nacho take pictures and selfies amongst the ruins. Later, Vaco wonders where his girlfriend is, and when she finally returns, he asks where she was. The woman says she took pictures, so he asks why she didn't tell him to come with her so they could take them together. Together. To appease her boyfriend, Vicky promises they can do so later. As they drive off, gas leaks from the severed fuel hose underneath the vehicle. Minutes later, Vicky catches Vaco snooping through her phone, but the man admonishes her for taking selfies when she was supposed to take pictures of the location. Suddenly, the van stops, and Nacho says it won't start back up. He heads outside to check the engine, but Erica points out the leaking gas from the broken fuel hose. While the group thinks of a plan to fix the hose and refill the gas tank, Vaco sees a car approaching. Senor X exits the vehicle and asks what they're doing there. The director explains the situation, so the older man kneels to check the fuel hose. After inspecting, he says the hose didn't break accidentally, but that someone intentionally cut it. He offers to take Vaco to a gas station for a new hose and gas. Before they leave, the director tells Diego to continue filming in the nearby cemetery, and then he warns Nacho to stay away from his girlfriend while he's gone. Later, Diego, Erica, and Carla prepare to leave for the cemetery, while Nacho and Vicky decide to stay in the vehicle. During the trek, the two women share a heartfelt conversation regarding how Carla adapted to a new life in the city after the flood. Erica offers the woman a drink, then gently wipes Carla's lips with her hand. They stare into each other's eyes and are about to share a kiss, but Diego interrupts when he asks how far they still have to go. By the van, Vicky admires Nacho's physique when he removes his shirt. To pass the time, the woman dances in front of the driver and playfully flirts with him. Meanwhile, the trio rests in a playground where Carla compliments Diego's drawings. As she flips through his sketch pad, she finds his unfinished illustration of her face. Concurrently in Senor X's car, Vaco sees Michaela's missing posters in the back seat. In the van, Vicky and Nacho make love, but they're unaware someone's stalking them from outside. In the cemetery, they film Carla talking about how people panicked when the water rose and how they paid divers to recover their loved one's remains. Then, the woman steps away for a moment to visit a relative's grave. Suddenly, Diego and Erica hear Carla's screams and rush to her location. The woman says a snake crawled out of the grave and bit her, so the man wraps her leg with a handkerchief. Then, he helps her up and says they must return to the van immediately. Meanwhile, Nacho asks Vicky why she's with Vaco even though she's out of his league. The woman explains that her boyfriend buys her nice things, takes her to different places, and promised her a role in his next movie. Annoyed, the driver says he'll be right back and walks away. After he leaves, Vicky wonders where her dog is, so she calls out Kiki's name. While Nacho relieves himself by the side of an abandoned building, a man wearing an animal skull mask appears behind him. Elsewhere, Senor X and Vaco run into an ominous roadblock, so the former steps out of the car with his rifle to confront the person wearing an animal skull mask. Suddenly, another masked man smashes the car's windshield, terrifying the director. When Vaco opens the car door to escape, the attacker grabs him by the throat and pushes him to the ground. Then, the man bashes the defenseless director's head several times until until he perishes. Concurrently, Vicky hides inside a steel drum to evade the tormentor. However, the masked man easily finds her, and the terrified woman screams. Later, the masked men take Vicky and Nacho to an abandoned slaughterhouse. Finally, the trio reach the van but find that their companions aren't there. 
That night, Erica shows Diego something strange in the cemetery footage she had taken earlier. Seconds later, the bright headlights from outside flood the van. The man thinks it's their companions, but Erica screams in fright when the vehicle starts to shake from people pushing on it. When the shaking stops, Diego goes to check outside, and he sees a stake with a gas mask hanging from it. He removes the mask, and to his horror, he finds Kiki's mangled carcass underneath. In the van, Vicky brushes the curtain aside to look out the window, and she sees a man in an animal mask. The terrified woman runs out of the vehicle, but she steps on a bear trap. Diego hears her scream and tries to help her. However, when one of the tormentors approaches, he leaves the woman behind and runs to an abandoned building. While the frightened man hides, Senor X grabs him and gestures for him to keep quiet. After the masked men leave, taking the women with them, Diego returns to the bear trap, and he sobs when he finds Erica's severed leg and the axe used to chop it off. In the slaughterhouse, Chimango sets up the camera while a tied-up Erica lays helplessly on a table. Minutes later, the deranged man uses a contraption to stretch out the woman's remaining leg before cutting it off with a meat slicer. In another room, Vicky regains consciousness, and she tries to scream when she realizes she's gagged and bound to a chair and sees Nacho trapped in a small cage. Pervertido approaches the driver and disrespectfully relieves himself all over the captive. Seconds later, he plays a record and opens the driver's cage. The man pulls Nacho out and stands him up on his feet. Then, the sadistic man stabs him in the stomach until his intestines pour out onto the floor, ending his life. When the evil man steps away momentarily, Tito, his brother, approaches Vicky. Suddenly, Pervertito returns and orders the masked man to leave. Tito wordlessly tries to protect the crying woman from his brother but eventually relents. Vicky begs him to stay, dreading what Pervertito might do when he leaves. Elsewhere in the slaughterhouse, Senor X enters a room with a shrine lined with candles and animal skulls. On a table, he finds an album of family pictures and photos of the men's stints in the military. Then he spots a familiar looking wallet, and when he opens it, he sees Michaela's picture, revealing that she was his daughter and that he is an epiquan looking for her. The defeated man realizes what happened to Michaela, so he sits and prepares to end his life with his rifle. Just as he's about to pull the trigger, he hears a woman screams. Concurrently, Chimango bites into Erica's severed leg before placing it in a meat grinder, revealing that the family abducts wayward tourists to eat them. Minutes later, Senor X follows the screams to Erica's location. He finds the woman on the table, unaware of the masked man lurking behind him. Meanwhile, Pervertido takes advantage of the defenseless Vicky. Suddenly, Diego enters the room and buries the axe into the sadistic man's back, ending his life. Later, he helps the traumatized woman to her feet and then tells her to sit and wait for him while he searches for their companions. In a room, Diego encounters a man wearing an animal mask but he fails to spot the person's bound hands. He stabs the man with a knife, but when he removes the skull from the lifeless body, he realizes it was Senor X with tape over his mouth. When he turns around, he sees Chimango holding a blade to Vicky's throat. Suddenly, another attacker knocks Diego out with a club. Eventually, he regains consciousness at the dining table next to Vicky. Seconds later, Abuela enters, pushing Erica in a wheelchair, revealing that she is the cannibalistic family's matriarch. Tito appears carrying pots and pans, but when he drops them, the older woman punishes him by hitting him repeatedly. So the embarrassed man sits next to Carla, who's still unconscious from her snakebite injury. Then, Abuela and Chimango feed Erica human meat pies against her will. Suddenly, the hysterical Vicky grabs a broken bottle and backs away to ward a wall. Unable to accept her cruel fate, she takes matters into her own hands and slashes her throat with a jagged glass. Amidst the chaos, Diego manages to shake loose from his ropes, and he runs out of the room. Abuela screams for Tito to chase down the man and ensure he doesn't escape. In a back room, Diego attacks the masked man when he's momentarily distracted by Carla's portrait. He knocks off Tito's skull mask, uncovering a grotesque deformed face underneath. Diego proceeds to hit the attacker with a pipe repeatedly when he suddenly hears Carla's voice begging him to stop because Tito doesn't know any better. The woman tells him to follow what her grandmother says, revealing that she is part of the deranged family. The confused man can't believe she allowed her friends to perish, so Carla explains that he'll never understand their situation because he doesn't know how it felt when no one came to save them during the flood. Behind Diego, Tito rises to his feet and grabs him by the throat, but Carla begs the man to let him go. Then, the woman 
woman kisses Diego, asks him for forgiveness, and then ends his life by stabbing his neck. Days later wearing a wig, Carla hitches a ride from two men in a convertible. She says she's on her way to Epiquen, but the clueless men have no idea they're headed to their deaths like lambs to the slaughter. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.